three, two, one. All right, it being 6.03, I'll call the special board meeting of the GFW school board to order. Uh, first item on the agenda is approving the agenda. Um, we're doing strategic planning tonight, and we also have action required on the COVID-19 planning days. Um, other than that, those are the only two items on the agenda. Is there a motion to approve? I'll, I'll make a motion. Is there a second? I'll second if if um, I wasn't the first one. Motion's made and second to approve the agenda. Um, as long as it's virtual, we need to do a roll call vote. So Julie, you want to take care of that? Sure can. Uh, Schmidt? Yes. Merkel? Yes. Keen? Yes. Rockniak? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Um, we're going to move, switch to the agenda items. We're going to do the COVID-19 planning days first, and then we can focus on strategic planning. So, Jeff, you want to lead us through this? Absolutely. Thank you, Chair Keen. Um, at our last uh, meeting, we discussed uh, tabling the topic of um, moving forward with uh, an opportunity for our staff to use some of the COVID planning days. I had been shared that um, our staff could really utilize some time to really kind of get their feet under them again. They, they've been working super hard trying to meet the needs of our students and we uh, went out and gathered a little bit of feedback between the last meeting and this meeting, and staff did say that the two days where we come to school for spring break or before spring break, there's two days there. They did identify that as probably being the best, largely because it would give them, um, it really is going to give them a block of time to just kind of decompress. It's, it's a stressful time in schools right now, and so um, naturally, and with the COVID and been going all year long, um, that was the consideration. They did offer a backup date. They said, you know, if we can't do that, if we could do something like the Monday after Easter or something like that, they did throw that out as well. So, um, so the um, decision ahead for the board to consider it is the option of giving staff an opportunity, giving using some of our COVID-19 planning days that are allocated by the state of Minnesota for our staff, um, either before, during that spring break time, those two days, or, um, finding an alternative date if the board sees fit. All right, is everybody aware of what two days the superintendent is talking about? Yes. Is there any other further discussion or anybody want a clarification or more information? I just have a quick question um, for Mr. Horton. So if we, you, when we use these two days, if for some reason in the future, we need to utilize another day, like say we have an outbreak and we need to change models again, I hope not. But if we do, that would just be days on our time and we would have to make that up at the end of the year. Is that correct? Uh, we would have a couple options. Um, we would be able to ask the state for additional days if we do end up in that situation. So we could ask the state for additional days. Um, if we did end up in a really tough situation, we might just have to switch to distance learning. Um, originally, we thought that we we're going to have to kind of be like turnkey, like to switch dates. But um, you know, we've really seen more of school districts phasing in and out of things saying like, okay, we're going to hang in there through the end of the week and then uh, we'll go on next Monday. So we could have like a Friday having those early release days as a time to adjust. And we could also apply ahead of time. Like let's say on a Tuesday, we made that decision. I could apply to the state and have time to get feedback to say, we're going to take the following Monday off um, and still get that to council. We don't have to make up days. So I do think we have some options there if we okay. do end up in that situation, unfortunately. Okay. Like I said, I hope not, but just 
just so we kind of know what, what will go on if that does happen. Any other questions or comments? If not, I'll move that we take the two days as COVID planning days and take them away from student contact. Is there a second? And those would be uh, March 22nd and March 23rd if you're looking for exact dates. Perfect. And I'll second that motion. Motion's made and seconded. Julie, you want to do a roll call vote? Sure can. Merkel? Yes. Frockniak? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Keen? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. All right, Ms. Waldner, it's all up to you. Sounds good. Thank you, Chairman Keen. I appreciate it. And I'm glad that you were able to get your business conducted too. It's, it's uh, watching the board in action, which is kind of neat for, I'm sure, your community members. So can, welcome, everybody, to Strategic Planning Committee meeting number two. I'm looking at names, and I think most of you were here last week. That week went by very, very fast, and there was a lot of work that happened in between, and I will be sharing that with you in just a little bit. I do want to check in with Superintendent Horton um, to make sure, did everyone receive the materials, the PowerPoint, and the environmental stand summary? Was that emailed out to the group? Uh, we did put that in the shared folder with the okay. other materials. Perfect. Thank you. So you do have that as a reference as well. And I'll be showing the PowerPoint in just a minute. And then the other materials I'll be referencing, but it's nice for you to have access to those as well. And then uh, I'm going to hit the chat room right now and just uh, enter a link in there. So you again have my name and title and contact information and also the link that we will be using for this evening. So for those of you who weren't with us last week, my name is Gail Gelman. I serve as Director of Strategic Planning and Board Leadership with Minnesota School Boards Association. And we are the agency that is the go-to for school boards. And one of the things that we assist with is strategic planning and your board is in the process of that right now. Last week, we had a busy evening and we didn't take time to do introductions. So I would like to do that this evening. And what I will do is I've got the participant list open right now, and I am going to just start calling out your name. And so when your name is called, we'll ask you to unmute and also uh, uh, open, um, start your video too, if you can, and just in, uh, introduce yourself, uh, including your name and the area that you represent. If you're a board member, if you're a staff member, and uh, a student, and how many years you've been part of the community. I think that would be fun for us to know as well. So name, role that you play, and number of years in the community. And my participant list has it alphabetized. So Amanda, you are up. Let's hear from you first. I knew I shouldn't have married somebody with the last name that started with a B. <laughs> <laughs> you had both A and B, and first names and last name, yes. I know. Um, my name is Mandy Bloomhofer, and I am a third grade teacher at GFW Elementary, and I have lived in the GFW community since I was 14 years old. So I am a GFW graduate as well. Um, so yeah, I've been in the community for close to 35 years now. So very good. Thank you, Mandy. Through the district and yeah, been here a long time. Good. Thank you very much. And next on my list is Allie. My name is Allie Kretsch. I am a student. I am in 10th grade and I have lived in Gibson, Minnesota my entire life. Very good. Thank you, Allie. Next, I see Amy. Hello, um, I'm in my car, so I'm not gonna try to undo my video too. But um, I'm Amy Bastion. I moved to Fairfax, um, I think 13 years ago for my first teaching job. So I teach 
high school Spanish right now, 912 Spanish, and I've also taught at the elementary school and in Fairfax too. Thank you, Amy. Drive careful, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And let's see, as I look at the list, uh, I see Brittany. Hello, everyone. I'm Brittany Gladka. I serve as the um, <laughs> principal at the junior and senior high school, and I have only been in the district for less than a year, but uh, happy to be here and um, excited to be here in the future, too. <laughs> Thank you, Brittany. Thank you. And Casey, I see you next on the list. <clears throat> Casey Prochnick, um, board member. I've lived in the district my entire life. Um, we won't say how many years, but it's been a while. <laughs> um, graduated from GFW. And yeah, I live a quarter mile from where I grew up. So, Thanks, Casey. And yep. next I see Catherine on the list. Um, I'm Catherine Stoll. I'm a student. I'm in ninth grade and I've lived in the district my entire life. Okay, thanks, Catherine. Next, I see Cecilia. Hi, uh, my name is Cecilia Sendejas. I'm the cultural liaison for GFW. I live in the district for 19 years. <laughs> Thank you, Cecilia. Next, I see Shanda. I'm trying to unmute. Okay. You got, name, you got it on. <laughs> my name is Chanda Krugel, and I'm a pair at the high school, and I have lived in the district my whole life. Okay. Thank you, Shandra. Shanda. And let's see, Cody. Cody Sievert. I'm a student, and I've lived in the North Given my entire life. Cody, what year are you in school? Oh, what's it called? Junior. Very good. Thanks, Cody. Uh, Dana. My name is Dana Litzow, and I've lived in the GFW district my entire life. Um, I am actually the city administrator in the city of Gibbon. Very good. Thank you. And Dan. Yeah, I'm a board member, and I uh, graduated from GFW High School, and I've lived here my entire life. So. Great. Thank you, Dan. And I hope your kids are healthy this evening. I remember a week ago you were doing some caregiving there it sounded like yeah it's always a never know what's coming up next mm -hmm. <laughs> always an adventure let's see mr hazen um doug hazen i'm the director of special ed i've worked for riverbend now for 12 years thank you doug and next i see and i'm going to ask for grace as i mispronounce a name here is it uh genevieve and on an iPhone, it looks like. Are you there and are you able to unmute? Okay, I think we're gonna go on, we'll go back and maybe we'll hear from her. How about Jacob? Hey, I'm Jake Langemo. I've been teaching high school social studies here for um, nine years. Thank you. And Jenny. Oh, there's well, Jenny Palmer. I'm the city administrator for the city of Winthrop, and I have lived in GFW my entire life. I graduated from GFW, and both of our kids graduated from GFW. Oh, great. Thank you. And Gen Genoveva? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. okay. And tell me if I pronounced that. Tell, let me yes. tell. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, I am a parent from uh, high school and elementary students since 19 years ago. My name is Genoveva Herrera. Thank you very much. Let's see. Jose? <clears throat> My name is Jose Cervantes. I've been going to GFW since 
uh, started going to school and I'm a junior in high school. Very good. Thank you, Jose. Lori. Let's see, Lori, how about Lindsay? I'm Lindsay Heine and I'm the business manager at GFW Public Schools. I've been there for about two and a half years now. I don't live in the community, but I enjoy when I go. Okay, thank you. And the next on my screen is Lauren. I think was that Laura Messner or Lauren? Yeah, hi. Um, I'm Lauren Messner. Uh, I am a junior um, at GFW High School, and I'm a student school board rep as well. And I've been in the community all my life. Very good. Good to have you here, Lucinda. Hello, my name is Lucinda. I think you just muted yourself, Lucinda. Sorry. Nope, not a problem. <laughs> My name is Lucinda Winch. Good evening. Um, I'm the district school nurse. Um, I've been the school nurse for four years, going on five years now. My husband and I have lived in the community of Fairfax for 10 years. Thank you. Uh, Mike. And you're muted, Mike. Okay, now I've got it. There First of all, Gail, I want to apologize. You know, many, many years ago when we interacted, you had a different name and I called you by the wrong name when I introduced you. And I, I'm oh, sorry. Actually, I, I do go by both names, so that's okay. Oh, no okay. problems. Yes. Well, then I'm covered. You're good. You're good. No, yep, you're covered. Mike, I've lived, I'm a member of the school board and I've lived in GFW my entire life. I graduated from Winthrop High School originally. So great. Thank you. Uh, Nathan. Thank you. My name is Nathan Lowy, and I have uh, three kids, two of which who are currently enrolled in GFW Elementary, and we have lived in Winthrop for going on eight years. Very good. Thank you, Nathan. Let's see. Uh, Sandy. Hi, my name is Sandy Banda, and I am a parent from school. I have two boys, one in high school and the other one in middle school. And I've been living in winter around nine years. Thank you, Sandy. And Sandy Pearson. There's two of us. <laughs> two yeah. Sandys. Yes, I just noticed that. Yes. Sandy Pearson. And I work with community education. I have lived in Winthrop all my life. And like Mike, I graduated from Winthrop. And my boys both graduated from GFW. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Sarah. I am Sarah Ramsley and I'm a parent to me. My husband and I moved to the area about seven years ago. And you are rocking someone right now, it looks like. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Okay. Evelyn, she's almost two weeks. Oh, adorable, adorable. Well, it's good to have her here with us tonight too. Thanks. And let's see, Kristen. <laughs> my dog is saying hello. Um, my name is Kristen Hed and I have been teaching at Gibbon Elementary, GFW Elementary for, I believe, 14 years. This year I'm switching it up and I'm a literacy coach for our elementary teachers. Um, my husband and I moved to GFW, I think 24 years ago. My husband also teaches at the high school. Um, my daughter graduated from GFW and my son is a junior this year. Very good, thank you. Now, my list is almost at the end here. I see um, there's a JoLynn on here on the iPhone. Hi, I'm JoLynn Hahn and um, <clears throat> I am a para at the elementary school and I have lived in Winthrop all my life. Graduated from Winthrop High School, have three children that went through GFW. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And I um, see Beth, I don't think we called on you before. Hi, I'm Beth Walter. I'm with the food service at GFW and I've worked there for, I think around 11 years now. Okay. I um, am not from GFW, but um, I enjoy working there. That's for sure. Great, thank you. Uh, Nikki. 
Hello. Um, yeah, of course, now my dog starts barking. That's usually when it happens, yeah. <laughs> uh, my name's Nikki Sabo. I am a parent and alumni of GFW. Uh, both my kids are in the high school. Um, I grew up in GFW in Winthrop and live in Gibbon and very involved in the community. So thanks for involving us. Good, Good to have you here. With that, I think I may have, who did I miss? I know I've missed a couple of folks here. Hi, Dave Troublehorn. Oh, Dave, okay. Yeah, I'm from Winthrop, been here my whole life, graduated from Winthrop High School, um, involved with some community things and wish everything to go very, very well for GFW in the future. Very good. Good to have you here, Dave. Your name says Lori on, on the screen. Okay. So. She signed me in because I'm not a computer <laughs> expert, but she signed me in. So I'm sorry why I didn't answer when you said Lori. <laughs> no, uh, that's okay. We, we got to figure it up. <laughs> if I lose you, we are actually in Branson, Missouri right now. So if oh. I lose you, I'm thinking about you all. Okay, sounds good. Well, enjoy your time in Branson. I am envious, okay? You'll get over. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate that. Very good. Okay. Now, who did I miss? I'm scrolling the names here. Anybody else? Um, Superintendent Horton, I didn't call Anna. on you, but okay. You who? missed Anna as well. Oh, Anna. Okay. I was getting there. Here, I was okay. excited that I didn't have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Anna Tice. Um, I have lived in Gibbon my entire life. I graduated from GFW. I am a former para from the high school. I um, worked there for seven years and I am very involved in our community as well. Very good. Thanks, Anna. And who was uh, somebody else that I missed? Hi, I'm Julie Elmer. I'm the Julie. admin assistant and we have lived in the community for our, over 30 years. Very good. And how did we do? Did we did we hear from everybody? Superintendent Horton, you might be last. I I suppose I could squeak in real quick. Oh, Wade. Okay. Sorry, I'm li I'm listed as GFW Schools as the host, so that's why my name didn't show up on there. Mm -hmm. but, um, I'm just lifelong resident of of the GFW communities. Grew up in Winthrop. Uh, parents and grandparents all graduated from the system, all of which were very proud. I have two kids uh, that are in the high school as well right now. Very good. Thanks, Wade. Anybody else that I've missed here? Yes, I'm last one. Okay, go for it. All right. I'm Jeff Horton. I'm an English teacher, social studies teacher, and a special education teacher. Currently serving as superintendent, and I get the honor of serving the community, which has been wonderful over the last uh, eight so months. If you go by where I spend the most amount of time, I have been a resident of GFW since early June. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone, for introducing yourself. I think it's nice for everybody participating in the strategic planning committee to know who else is here as well and what role that you're playing and what a wonderful cross-section of stakeholders. You have all the communities represented that are part of your school district. You have a nice cross-section of students and staff, both licensed and non-licensed. You've got your board members here, you have administrators and you have community members, and we're not going to hold it against Dave Treblehorn that he is in Branson tonight. Hopefully we'll see him back here next time. So thank you very much for your willingness to participate. I am going to do a screen share and put the PowerPoint up for this evening. And every once in a while, I will take that down so we can see cameras again, see people's faces. But for now, we'll put that up. And we just took care of introductions. And just as with last week, we are going to work on another element of the strategic plan. So the things that we would like to accomplish this evening, if you remember, uh, for those of you that were here last time, and I think most of you were, we talked about the information we gathered through the surveys, through the listening sessions, 
And then this, your superintendent shared a state of the district update. So you had lots of information that was shared with you last week. You didn't get to do a lot of talking. It was more listening. Tonight, we're going to ask you for some feedback on a few things as well. So be prepared with that. What I will do first is to share with you the results of what you provided as feedback on your environmental scan. The environmental scan was when you talked about the prouds, the possibilities, and the must-haves or must-address. And then from that information, we're going to take a look at focus areas. There'll be probably four to five focus areas for the strategic plan. I have identified some, but I want your feedback and your input as well. So I pulled together some information that I'll let you react to. And then we're gonna start working on what we call the foundational elements of the strategic plan. And that's the belief statements, the mission statement and the vision statement. And so here we go. Um, and this is just a reminder that why we are doing this is because this is a responsibility of your board of education to have a strategic plan. And you'll see that at the top of the circle, under the word establish. And so your strategic plan is starting to wind down or has wound down and your board is ready to work on a new strategic plan. And why then it's required by Minnesota statute, but also the goals, those goals that are in the center of this uh, uh, diagram, those goals will be what, what help lead your board as they make decisions in the next three to five years. The emphasis will always, always be on equitable education or student achievement for all. Um, before I start talking about the environmental scan, I do want to call on your superintendent. There's some new information that was received uh, called an equity dashboard, and we thought it would be helpful for you to hear a few nuggets of what that was all about because it ties in so closely to the work that we're doing with the strategic plan. So with that, Superintendent Horton, I'm gonna turn it over to you and I'm guessing you, are you gonna do a screen share also? Okay. And I think you, I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna to try to do a short little screen share. Okay, sounds good. See if I can make this happen, okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, Gail, are you able to see my screen? Yes, I am. Looks okay. good. Wonderful. Um, I shared some information at our la at our um, state of the school district address last week, and I talked about the 10 commitments to equity that are outlined by the Minnesota Department of Education. They also offer a definition for edu educational equity, and they state that educational equity is the condition of justice, fairness, and inclusion in which are systems of education so that all students have access to the opportunities to learn and develop to their fullest potentials. The pursuit of educational equity recognizes the historical conditions and barriers that have prevented opportunity and success in learning for students based on race, income, and social conditions. Eliminating those structural barriers and institutional barriers to educational opportunities requires systemic change allow for distribution of resources, information, and other supports depending on the student's situation to ensure an equitable outcome. That's a lot. There's a lot packed in there. But when we take a look at our federal legislation, when we take a look at World's Best Workforce, the Every Student Succeeds Act, they are all grounded in equity. And how are we, what are we doing to support all students? We don't talk about achievement gaps anymore. We talk about high achievement for all. And I want to share a little bit more about the difference between equity and equality. Equity is a principle based on justness and fairness. Equality demands everyone is treated at the same level. A simple visual to capture this is this family or perceived family watching a uh, baseball game. In equality, we give everybody the same box and everybody stands on a box. And we see that for some people that box works and for others that box fails them. This too is true in education. If we really take an equitable approach is we give everybody what they need to the best of our ability with our resources. In this case, 
the middle person gets a single box and the, per the person on the end gets two boxes. This means some people get more of something because they need extra services. I think special education is a great example of this when we talk about individual education plans and ed individualizing learning for students who need extra support. We have been partnering with 24 school districts across the country to take a look at equity. Large districts, small districts, rural, urban, suburban, to come up with ideas on how to support all learners. And as part of that, we've had an opportunity to partner with Hanover Research. Earlier this year, a couple months ago, we sent out an equity diagnostic and we asked people to respond to that. We had all of our, we had most of our students respond as well as staff and parents. We had over 400 responses, which was wonderful to see. And from there, we have it has been identified and there's a lot of data there and we're not gonna have time to break it all down here and we'll have appropriate teams do that. But the big takeaway, and we've heard this in our listening sessions with staff, we've heard this in our listening sessions through superintendent talks, we've heard this in our community listening sessions, we've heard this from our students, that equity really needs to be central for all that we do. And themes such as professional development around equity and framework for equity, equity were things that rose to the top. Ensuring equity, uh, equitable access to all classes and all courses taken and to rigorous courses. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going into all the details and there will be teams that can break that out. And I'm happy to sit down and share some of that information with folks on the side. Uh, tonight, I really want to be more about you and processing through, but I wanted to show that that tool has identified equity as a high priority for our school district. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Ms. Gilman. Very good. Thank you, Superintendent Horton. And we will look forward to receiving additional information. And I like the graphic that you use that is um, something that really resonates about being equitable with all students. Well, I am going to do a screen share again. And we will continue on. I'm also going to mention that in the packet that you received, we, we try to be 150% transparent in all the information that we gather. So just as last week, you got a copy of the stakeholder engagement report, which listed everything that everyone said and nothing was omitted. Uh, this week, one of the items in your packet was a summary of the environmental scan, the prouds, the possibilities, and the must-haves. So if you are curious about the comments that folks made and submitted, everything is there. And um, I have pulled out some of the themes that I'll be sharing with you. But first, let me talk about some of the things I shared with you last week, those big ideas, those strengths that came from the surveys and the listening sessions. And then as I do that, I'm going to share a summary of what you as strategic planning committee members shared. And you'll see that there are some themes that start resonating and uh, some, some common ideas that we'll want to make sure that we include in the strategic plan. So strengths from the surveys and listening sessions. Last week, I shared that uh, many people said, you have safe and secure facilities. You have great community support. You have hardworking, caring, committed, passionate staff and administration who put the needs of student fir students first. You have small class sizes, that's a bonus, and you have updated technology. There are a lot of big ideas of things that could be considered as opportunities as you move forward. And the opportunities are the things that we'll wanna capture in your strategic plan. So some things that we learned from the surveys and the listening sessions, uh, review your facilities and consider updates where needed, improve staff development opportunities, equip staff and students to address bias and exclusionary language or behaviors when it occurs, develop a procedure to regularly review and update your curriculum, your instructional strat strategies and assessment measures, uh, have a commitment to long range continuous improvement and agreement on um, the shared purpose and direction for the school district, 
provide additional opportunities for co-curriculars, clubs and activities, increased course offerings, uh, talked about life skills, art, advanced uh, classes, business and ag classes, improve your financial status of the school district, recruit and maintain quality staff and reduce the staff turnover, gain support from the entire community or the entire school community, make sure there's support for multi-language students and uh, translators, increase the social, emotional and behavioral support for students, increase enrollment, improve external and internal communi communication, and then explore methods for engaging more students and provide equitable education for all students. So last week after we shared that, and then you had a chance to weigh in, here are some of the things that you said were the prouds. And what I did was to highlight things that were mentioned over and over again. And so one of the prouds was you had amazing, quality, committed, caring, compassionate staff, and the staff was in, included all staff, your paras, your cooks, your bus drivers, your custodians, who build strong relationships with students. They go above and beyond to support students, and they want to st see students succeed. You said that you're proud of the small class sizes, which enhance student learning. You said that reading scores need to continue to improve. You said community support. You're proud of that. The community wants to see GFW succeed and believes the district can correct past shortcomings. And I think a lot of those were related to the finances. You said you were proud that you have a close knit school built on your three small towns, three small rural towns, I probably should have added. <clears throat> school pride is high at GFW. You said that you were proud of technology, including the computer lab, internet access, multimedia courses, and, depart and the departments. Um, they're exceptional, and they prepare students for uh, the future, their future careers. You have a great early childhood program that leads kids to a positive school experience. You were proud of the many opportunities in and out of school for students as they grow. And you said communication efforts from administration to students and parents and community have soared in the past year. And a lot of this, of course, is due to the pandemic. Then we asked you to talk about what you saw as some of the possibilities that might be addressed within the school district. And here are some of the things that you shared. You said, let's prepare students for career and or college. Not every student goes to college. Uh, some students go to a technical school, some go right into the workforce, some go into the armed services. So prepare students for whatever the future might be for them. Review your current course offerings, <clears throat> expand course offerings, prepare students for career, technical, a school, college, look at offering more advanced placement or AP classes, more electives, prepare students for our rural communities who rely on the trades and agriculture, and also remember to include life skills. Another possibility was to build student and staff morale. It's been a rough year. It's been lots of things that the school district has gone through, our state and our country has gone through. So look for ways that we can build that morale. Additional, provide additional support for ELL, English um, language learners. Uh, students, developing a five to 10 year plan for facilities and technology, complete a curriculum review, either strengthen or have stronger expanded athletics, fine arts and clubs for students and attract new students to additional activities, attract new families to the district, have more collaboration with your local businesses, have better communication between administration and staff uh, with students and with parents. So just as you said, you were proud of the communication. It's also an area that could be worked on as well. Stabilize your finances. You're on your way to that. Improve discipline policies and procedures and 
improve unity among the district's communities. So again, these came off the handout that is the summary that was in your packet. And what I did was to highlight the things that were mentioned multiple times. Okay, then we have the categories of must haves. And as we talked about that, I said, what are the things that GFW absolutely has to address or must have? And here are the things that you said, and some of these are gonna be similar to the possibilities. So if you're hearing some themes, um, that's intentional. It's what, what you have said as well. So your must haves, retain and grow your enrollment, improve your test scores, increase support for ELL, title, special education, free and reduced students, provide courses that prepare students for careers, tech, trades, AP, stabilize finances, address student and staff mental health needs, improve student and staff morale, provide equitable education for all students, ensure all students have access to what they need to succeed. Uh, staff professional development and retention of staff are a must have. Review your staffing needs and make adjustments. Better communication between administration and staff. Look at facility updates. Safety and accessibility were mentioned. Remain relevant in technology. Market your school district and improve communications. Identify opportunities to prepare students for career in college. And the last one at the bottom is develop community partnerships and community engagement. I am going to go on to the next slide. So with that in mind, and then after I, I go through this, I'm gonna give you a chance to weigh in and I'm gonna do that by group. So we're gonna call on board members, we're gonna call on staff, community and students to weigh in. So as I looked at this, and this is not the end all be all, but as I looked at this, the themes or the focus areas that I started to see are these five that are listed. Student achievement, student support or student staff support. Number three, communications, outreach, marketing. Number four, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And number five, finances. And as I looked at each of those areas, some things that fall within those areas that lend strength to why they might be considered a focus area are the following things. <clears throat> so under student achievement, and remember I said at the first meeting, uh, MSBA always includes student achievement in the strategic plan because of the world's best workforce. In addition to that, other things related to student achievement that would tie in include your test scores, learning models, career and college readiness, expansion of electives, advanced or accelerated sections of core classes, curriculum review, life skills, equitable approach to student offerings. Under the student support and or staff support, things now, as you go back to the big ideas that I generated for you and the possibilities and must haves that you generated, some things that would fall under this second category include student mental health, diversity, equity, inclusion, cultural competency, extracurriculars, school clubs, maintaining small class sizes, staff mental health, maintain strong staff base, review staffing needs, staff professional development, improving school pride, improving test scores, listen to all student voices, um, school pride looks like I got in there twice, discipline policies and procedures and staffing needs. And then as we look at communication, marketing, outreach, this would include community support and community partnerships, increasing your enrollment, internal and external communications, enhancing family outreach, uh, school pride, and unification or unifying your district. And then under diversity, equity, and inclusion, looking at an equitable education for all students, support for ELL, 
title, special ed, free and reduced. And then lastly, finances, moving out of statutory operating debt, stabilize your budget, develop the long-term facilities plan. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing, and I'd like to hear from you on those focus areas and then also the items that fall within that. So maybe, can I start with the board members first? Um, and I'm just going to, again, you can unmute and just comment. Surprises, do you agree with what you saw? What tweaks might you make or changes might you make in the things that you saw? And uh, Chairman Keene, are you okay with starting first this evening? Sure. Okay, thanks. No, I think it's a very inclusive list and it's also very, very informative. And I mean, I, I think it hits all the high points that we're trying to, to address. I mean, the board is certainly focused on our getting our finances in order. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get our curriculum to match with what the residents and students of the district feel they want and, and, and more importantly need to develop good educational outcomes for all our students. Um, no, I think the list is, it's certainly a very large list, mm -hmm. but there's also some very important points on there. And I think it covers the majority of people's concerns about what, what should or shouldn't be happening at GFW. Okay, good. And keep in mind with the strategic plan, this will be a three to five year plan. So if it looks like there's a lot, uh, there's three to five years to complete the work. And in fact, a number of the items listed are maybe even in progress and will be a continuation of, of some of the work that you're doing. Um, with that, how about uh, board member Merkel? Would you be willing to share your thoughts on what you saw and what you heard? Oh, it looks like everybody's got lots of good ideas. I hope uh, we can just keep continuing and moving along so there's something good for all the children in our area. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's all I look for. Okay. You know, quality education. So. Very good. Good. Thank you. How about uh, board member Prokniak? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I would echo both what um, Mike and Dan said um, long list, but nothing in there really surprises me too much. Um, all the things that I would say I agree with, um, I don't disagree with anything. So I think it's a great list. Okay, thank you. Let's move on to the staff. Uh, just unmute and put your camera on and comments, things that you'd like to share, you're glad you saw, or things that are missing that you wanna make sure we get added in. And don't be shy staff members. How about Brittany, I can see you have your camera on. Do you wanna make some comments? I knew that was coming. Yep. <laughs> No, all is good. Um, I, I think that it's a great list. I list, I think that it's, um, long, but it's all inclusive. I, and I, and just like somebody had said it, we're working on a lot of these things right now. So it's great to just bring further attention to that and really, um, really streamline everything that we are doing to that focus of this is the, this is the mission of our district. So I think that it just gives us that guidance to be even more successful. So very exciting with the things on the list. Okay. Thank you. Any other staff members that would like to comment? I see mental health uh, for both students mm -hmm. and staffs as uh, number one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I believe that if we have a healthy staff, we will go far. I believe if we have healthy students, they will go far. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you, Julie. Other staff members who'd like to comment. Hi, this is Lucinda. I would just like to say that um, I know this year 
has been unprecedented for anyone. Mm -hmm. But also in the previous five years, we have had several changes in our leadership in the schools. So mm -hmm. I really feel that that we're finally coming together and starting to have a good, strong plan. And, and that's thanks to, to Mr. Horton and the, and the board members ability and the principal's ability to work together, but it's going to be tough. And it has been, but we're, we're pushing through it. And I just hope everybody tries to stay on the same page and do what's best for everyone that's that's concerned and especially our kiddos because I always say because I'm a nurse they're going to be taking care of us someday so we better be taking mm -hmm. good care of them now so thank you for listening yeah very good points thank you thank you Lucinda other staff members Sandy yes yes just looking at this list under two um there's many things that I think we've started doing well. I mean, when I look at the diversity and the equity and inclusion, these are all things that I think this past year we have done more training and more um, paying attention to that than probably any other year. So I think there's also a lot of good things starting to happen. Okay, thank you. Other staff members, your thoughts? Yes, I, I will have to agree. I mean, it's it's a big list, but we're working towards that. It's a lot of work to um, that still needs to be done. Um, but I think if we continue in the directions that, that we're going um, this year, it has been uh, more work and we're focusing more on, you know, um, getting mm -hmm. to those issues. Um, I think uh, we can do it. it. It will take a lot of time, but we'll get there. Okay, great. Thank you, Cecilia. Other staff members, comments that you'd like to make? Okay. I can wait. Go ahead. I'll just chime in quick too. I know that the mental health, I'll just reiterate what you, Julie said. Mm -hmm. Right now, I, I, I really want to stress how taxing uh, the school year has been on our staff. And it's, it's difficult to sometimes not walk, our, it's difficult to walk through a building and, and to have people that really want to have a, a quality conversation, but are very concerned with how um, their perspective on things will be perceived mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. which I think is a little unfortunate. Um, I, I just want to reiterate how we have an excellent staff and our administration is working hard. And uh, I think trying to find some, um, just a way for the staff uh, to give them a boost. Uh, and it's hard because it's not just our school, it's all educators mm -hmm. across the nation. And uh, I just think having letting them know in some regard that we're working through this together and doing what we can and what's best for the kids. And uh, we're gonna, we wanna be able to look back and be proud of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. yep. Great, thank you, Wade. Any other staff members wanna weigh in? Hi, this is Jolyn. Okay, thanks. And and looking at this list, it is a good list for the board members to look over because it is the voices of the staff, mm -hmm. of the students, and of the community. And I really think we need to pay attention to what some of the main things were that were repeated. Listen to our students. Communicate with your staff. It is all so important. And I think sometimes we fall on the side of those things. And, um, and I hope this is a guide for the board to look into. You know, if they have questions, they should ask. And, um, and maybe they can be answered, you know, in a way that, they understand better. Mm -hmm. So it's a good list. 
I think we just have to look into it deeper and see what is all needed. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you for that, Jill. And that was actually a very good commercial on, on strategic planning and why it's so important to have all the stakeholder voices heard. And I think that was a, that was a real priority with your board of education too, because I, I maybe said this, well, I know that I said this last week, certainly your board could sit down and write a strategic plan. Your superintendent could do it, but when everybody does it independently, it's theirs. It's not yours or ours, so to speak. And so that's why there's so much community engagement and, and your board should feel comfortable at the end of this process, knowing that they've heard from all the voices too, and that when they're making decisions, they truly are reflecting this, all the stakeholders from the district, all the communities. So that's important. So thank you for that. Uh, any other staff before we move on to uh, the next group? Anybody else? How about our community members there? Those of you that are representing the community parents, former graduates. Let's hear from you. What are your Hi. thoughts? Dave, Dave Travelhorn here. Yeah, Dave. Yes, I just want to say yes, I agree with everyone that commented. And there is a lot of big steps, but I think we're headed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. You know, and communicate, communicate, communicate. Mm -hmm. Not just students and teachers, with our communities also, like we are right now with this planning. Mm -hmm. And we do live in agriculture. I believe mm -hmm. agriculture pays 80 some percent of our taxes. And there is a lot of fields in agriculture that kids can go into. And there's other fields also, trades and all that also, which is part of the plan. I've seen that in the plan, which we need to, I'm, you know, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. No, thank you for that. Thank you. And I think being an agricultural community is one of the uniquenesses of GFW. And so making sure to reflect that in the work that you do. So thank you, Nathan. I see your camera on. Did you have something you'd like to share? Yes, I do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I want to echo what everybody has said. There's really nothing shocking in this list of uh, possible opportunities. Um, most of the things are things that are going to have a continuing need for improvement. It's not a fix it mm -hmm. once and it's done for good. Right. Um, ultimately, everyone has, a, has to give a little to make it better across the board. Mm -hmm. It's not an all or nothing situation, any of these, none of them are mm -hmm. all or nothing. Um, we also, as a whole, as community members, as parents, teachers, staff members, administration and students, we all need to make sure that we're continuing to make improvements and that we're truly listening and hearing and adapting to the concerns of everyone top to bottom. Mm -hmm. um, we need to make sure that as we're addressing these things, we're leaving things better than it was previously, that we're continuing to make improvements and that we're ultimately making these decisions with our children in mind, because at the end of everything, it's about our kids. Our kids are gaining an education here and they need to, they need to be the number one focus. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nathan. How about some other community members, other parents, other business folks that are on the committee? I don't want to keep echoing what everybody's saying, but I mm -hmm. really was struck by what Joe Lynn said. She mm -hmm. said it. Um, she's a pair at the high school or at the school. I was mm -hmm. a pair at the high school for seven years. So I saw that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. I now work for Jackson Electric in Winthrop. Mm -hmm. We are very fortunate to have almost all of our employees, GFW grads. So wow. we need to listen to what our communities are saying. We need to listen. We need to hear what our kids want. We need to hear what the parents want. And like Nathan said, it is about our kids. I do not have kids yet, but someday I want them to go to GFW. And I just don't want it to be where it disappears if we aren't listening to what we actually need. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you for that, Anne. I appreciate that. And, and uh, well said in that the people that are working at the business you work at are, most of them are GFW grads, very important. Other community members who'd like to speak out. Or 
Well, if not, let's, I'm going to give everybody a chance one more time, but let's move on to the most important group here. And that is our student group. So for the students that are part of the committee, what things caught your eye when it, when we talked about the classes or any of the activities, let's hear from you. Allie, I see your camera on and I know that you are willing to share. So let's hear your thoughts. Honestly, as someone who, who's been about a part of community for a long time and a student council representative, absolutely none of this surprises me. And that is why I am so glad that as far as I know, this is the first time that we have been actually listened to as students, we mm -hmm. have a voice. So I just like to say thank you. Great. Well, thank you, Allie, for that. Let's hear from some of our other students. Um, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Catherine. Um, I also want to thank you guys for actually listening to us. We've always been told that we have a voice, but it really hasn't been shown very much. So I'd like to thank everybody for including us and including our answers instead of putting them down because we're younger, which I think is a good reason to have us here is because we're kind of living in the school system. You guys are just watching for it pretty much. So I think that it's really admirable that we have staff that cares about our opinions and isn't just pushing them to the side. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for that, Catherine. Uh, Lauren, what would you like to share? Hi, yeah. Um, I hope that my connection's better. I switched to my phone. Mm -hmm. So, um, good. but yeah, I would just uh, like to say that from looking at the list and stuff, um, and as a person, as a student and a person who's dealt with mental issues, mental health issues myself, that's extremely important for us students and the staff um, because we just want uh, a safe place to, to be at and, and mm -hmm. feel safe. And I would um, say that throughout, like, my entire like um, GFW district, uh, district career or whatever, mm -hmm. I um, have always felt safe and I've always felt, you know, comforted and like I can, you know, be who I am. Um, so I feel like that's, um, that, that's, that's just me. I don't know other people, but like, I think that um, we have done a good job with that or the school has done a good job. Um, but Yes, giving us students more of a voice is very important um, because, you know, we we have things that we think could help as well. So, but I think the most important thing, um, kind of going off what Julie said, is that mental health is the biggest thing. And so that's, that's okay. what I think is the biggest focus. Great. Thank you, Lauren. Jose, I see your camera is on. What would you like to share? Yeah. I'd like to also mention uh, how important some of their classes are, like the skills, life skills, trade skills, and arts. Mm -hmm. We like to throw those aside and say they're not as important. I believe that the life skills and trade skills, like they help students in the future because mm -hmm. school mostly prepares us for college, but the truth is not everybody's going to go to college. Mm -hmm. So I think that students should be prepared for any, any path choose. They should be prepared for it. And the arts, it's also thrown as a side, thrown aside is not as important. But I think it's very important to help like with self-expression. It teaches like confidence. So you can you can feel as an individual, not just part of a system. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. And you're right. Everybody does something different when they leave school. So having everyone prepared for whatever it is is important. Thanks, Jose. Uh, Cody, I see your camera's on. Let's hear what you have to say. I really agree. I really agree with Jose on that point there that people, they're not always going to college or this or that. They sometimes even just go into the job field right away. Mm -hmm. And really preparing students for all the walks of life is very important. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Cody. Did we hear from all the students? Did I miss anyone? Let's see, Superintendent Horton, help me out here. If I missed any students, remind me of who I might have missed. 
Okay. And if not, let's go back to anybody else. Now I did just notice um, board member Schmidt. I'm going to just check and see, I didn't call on you before. Did you want to add anything? Uh, sure. I can add a little bit. Uh, um, first of all, I'd just like to thank everybody here um, coming to these nights and as a new board member, I understand there's going to be a lot of challenges. Um, the district has gone through a lot and then all of a sudden, you know, all public schools and everything are going through a lot with COVID. So mm -hmm. to go through this list with everybody um, and then, you know, hopefully us board members can hear some of these challenges and work together to find solutions mm -hmm. to help build the brand at GFW, to help it grow, to help it be successful for as many students as we possibly can, so. Great, thank you. Anybody else before we move on? I'm looking through the list. I think you, I think all the students that are here okay. commented. I had a chance I to share. My, I stop at the S's on my screen, so if I miss some, please. <laughs> okay, I think we might've caught everybody. Catherine, did you have something you wanted to add? It looks like you're unmuted or is or not. Yeah. Okay. I think that uh, mental health of students is extremely mm -hmm. important, like, but also mm -hmm. teachers. You can tell that their mm -hmm. work stress has gotten so much stronger. They have to put mm -hmm. more on us because we were so behind last year. Mm -hmm. We didn't get done last year. So we're going to be completely behind on that. Mm -hmm. So I think that the fact that you guys are taking mental health into like, Oh, what's the word? I don't remember, but that you guys are taking that into care mm -hmm. and consideration. And you're not just looking at, we need to better our test scores, which obviously we do, or we need to, you know, get more classes, which obviously we do. But mm -hmm. the fact that you guys are listening and including everybody and giving us lists to look at instead of just saying, you know, opinions where, and we're actually talking about them. I think that's really good because we really haven't had that in the past, so. Good, thank you for that, Catherine. Nikki, did you have something you wanted to add? I did, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, really, it's kind of, kind of stress that how important of a time we're in right now, considering um, COVID and everything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, consider all of the, the, the housing market right now is absolutely booming. You can't mm -hmm. keep the market for longer than 48 hours around here. Mm -hmm. Consider that as we make these decisions and consider all of these new families that we could really be attracting with, you know, innovative classes and new uh, trade fields and all of these things that we could kind of pull them into our district with. Um, I don't have those answers. I'm just, as a person who sees housing signs go up and sold mm -hmm. On just as fast as the signs can get in the yards, uh, it's it just seems like everything is happening right now. So the mm -hmm. fact that we're even discussing all of these things is just very timely to me. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you for that, Nikki. Well, great. Anyone else want to weigh in before we move on? Um, I would just like to add that mm -hmm. um, this like year has been la part of last year, and this year has mm -hmm. been very you know difficult on. Mm -hmm like everyone ever. Mm -hmm. So like, um, but from the student's perspective, uh, I feel like most of us can see how hard everyone has been working. Our, our um, elders and peers, how hard everyone has been working mm -hmm. to make it as normal and as like the best it can be. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the first couple of months and well weeks I adjusted pretty quickly but you know it was difficult it was weird I didn't like it but I think you know everyone's kind of adjusted nobody wants to stay in this position but I feel like everyone has done a very good job in making everyone feel as comfortable as possible and having the option of online if people need it mm -hmm. is really important too so oh, great thank you Lauren those are great observations too thank you for that well, let's, let's move on, but before I do, I just wanna say that the next steps with this information is to um, probably, we'll probably stick with those focus areas. I didn't hear any big opposition to that. And then the next step is the information that is listed under those focus areas will actually become goals and objectives. 
And so there's a lot of things that we will not lose sight of because beyond the goals and objectives, your superintendent and the administrative team will actually put action steps into place. So again, we'll be very transparent. You'll be a part of the process. And when we come together next time, you'll get to see what some of those goals are and objectives that we'll be considering. And then the picture will start to come together. So, okay. Well, unless there, there are no other questions or comments, I am going to do a screen share again, and we're gonna move on to the next task. So the next, next task is belief statements. Belief statements are the value statements, the values that the group that you hold for the school district. Your belief statements communicate who the district stands for and on what principles it operates. Your belief statements reflect all students, all learners from birth to end of life. That's who the school district serves, all learners from the time they're born to the end of their life. Your belief statements establish the moral and ethical priorities that guide the school district's activities. They should be sincere and uncompromising positions. And with that said, the belief statements will then be used by your school board. They'll use them to help make difficult decisions such as funding or staffing. They'll go back to those belief statements and say, okay, what is it that we value? What is it that we believe in? And we'll make our decisions based on that. If the belief statements truly reflect the district values of all stakeholders, uh, all stakeholders then will be able to articulate them and advocate for them. And they will be able to say, yes, this is what we believe at GFW. The belief statement should be something that grabs your attention and it should be a statement of the core things you believe in about education, about student achievement for all, about equitable education. So here are some examples of belief statements. And these are random examples that I have pulled from other strategic plans that I've worked on. Uh, for example, we believe every person has intrinsic value. We believe all people deserve to be treated with respect. We believe all learners have unlimited potential to learn. We believe honesty and trust are critical for building community. Um, we believe we assure accountability through shared evidence-based and student-centered decision-making, or we are responsive to the needs, to the diverse needs of all learners. So those are some examples. So as you think about writing belief statements, and you'll remember that last time in the, the resources that Superintendent Horton sent to you, there was a homework assignment of actually coming up with some belief statements and some descriptions of how you do that. So when you think about those belief statements, you're asking yourself, what do you value? What do you believe about students, about learners and learning? What do you believe about teachers and teaching? What do we believe about the role of parents in students' learning? And what do we believe about the role of the community? And so in that homework assignment, we asked you to write down some belief statements. And so, I am going to stop sharing my screen again for a little bit. Let's hear from you. Did anybody have a chance to jot some belief statements down? And would you like to just share those with us? What did you come up with? Anyone want to share? Um, I'll share mine. It's Thank I you. Um, I put down, we believe GFW is a community where you can be heard, accepted, and respected. Okay. Very good. And I'm going to have you say it again, Catherine. I thought that was very powerful. We believe. Go ahead. We believe GFW is a community to be heard, accepted, and respected. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Let's hear from others. Belief statements that you jotted down. And I'm going to, well, we're waiting for somebody else to weigh in. Uh, Doug put in, uh, we believe all students at GFW school, oh, let me pop open my chat box here. Uh, we believe all students at GFW should be offered an excellent education 
that is achieved while being fiscally responsible. Offered an equitable education that is achieved while being fiscally responsible. Thanks for that, Doug. Let's hear from others. Nathan, did you have one? I see your camera's on. Yep, I sure do. Um, and this one's kind of an open-ended mm -hmm. one with uh, the ability to interpret however you see fit, but we believe no one gets left behind, whether that's the students or teachers Ooh. or staff or administration, none of us need to be left behind. We all have a voice in this and we all need to be included. Wow, very good. Great. Let's hear from others. And it can also be just a value that you have. So you, you're saying, we just wanna make sure we get this stated as a belief. Anybody else wanna share theirs? We believe in mutual respect. Very good, thank you, Anna. Wonderful. Other values, other belief statements. We believe that the foundation for learning requires integrity, respect, and accountability. Very good. I'm going to have you repeat that, Jolyn, one more time. We believe. We believe the foundation for learning requires integrity, respect, and accountability. And this can be achieved mm -hmm. by setting high expectations for our students and staff. Great. As I we, like. Mm -hmm. Yep. That was it. Great. Thank you very much. Let's hear from somebody else. Any others that you'd like to share? And those of you that shared, if you have, if you've written down more than one, you can sure share them too. I have one more. Okay, go ahead, Catherine. I have, we believe GFW, the community where your voice is heard, considered, and respected. Okay, great. I mean, I'm going to have you say it one more time so everybody can hear it again. Okay, I said, we believe GFW is a place where your voice is heard, considered, and respected. Awesome. Thank you. Nathan? Yeah, this kind of bounces off the same one that I said before, but we believe in acceptance and inclusion. Mm. Okay. Great. Okay, anybody else? Any others that you'd like to share? Okay, we Ellie, do you have one? The well-being of staff are the, our number one. Okay, and Allie, I'm going to have you say that one again, too, for us. We believe the well-being of our students and staff should be our number priority. Wow, that's great. Thank you, Allie. You have some awesome ones here. Okay, anybody else want to share? Um, this is Lucinda. I would uh -huh. like to say the... The statement of what takes a, a village to raise the child, it takes mm -hmm. all of our communities with everyone helping and assisting the people that provide. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Lucinda. Yep. And uh, Nikki wrote in the chat room, and I'm going to read that. We believe in preparing our students for the future by engaging them in learning opportunities relevant for the 21st century. And I'll read it one more time for you. We believe in preparing our students for the future by engaging them in learning opportunities and uh, learning opportunities relevant for the 21st century. Thank you for that, Nikki. Okay. Any others? Cody, did you have one you'd like to share? GFW will prepare students for a lifetime of learning and earning. Wow. Say it again. Let's hear it again. That was great. <laughs> GFW will prepare students for a lifetime of learning and earning. Awesome. Very good. 
Uh, Nathan popped another one into the chat room. We believe in fiscal responsibility, which results in equitable education. We believe in fiscal responsibility, which results in equitable education. Great. Thanks, Nathan. We Amy, believe. Go, go ahead, Julie. Okay. We believe students will reach their full potential and become successful, responsible citizens in a diverse society. Very good. I'm going to have you read it one more time again, Julie, so we can hear it again. We believe students will reach their full potential and become successful, responsible citizens in a diverse society. Okay, thank you. That was great. Anyone else? Okay, what I'm going to ask you to do is in the link in the chat room, and I think Sarah just popped one in, but I'll, I'll finish my thought and then I'll, I'll share Sarah's. What I'm gonna ask you to do is to type what you've shared. So for those of you who have shared your belief statements, type them into that form link. When you open it up, there'll be a category for typing beliefs. There'll also be one for mission and vision, which we're gonna go on to next. And I'll ask you to type that in. And for, for those of you that uh, didn't share, that's okay. You still have an opportunity. You can type your belief statements in there. And then what I will be doing is compiling them. And between now and the next time that we meet, I'm going to ask Superintendent, Superintendent Horton to send out the list. I'm going to have you do a vote on beliefs, mission, and vision. So I'll remind you of that before we go, but some of you might have already opened up that link and you can be typing while we're working and continuing on as well. And then uh, Sarah, thank you. She typed in in the chat room. We believe in having good communication and collaboration between home, school, and the community. And I'll read it one more time. We believe in having good communication and collaboration between home, school and the community. These, these were all great, everybody. So thank you in advance for typing them into that form. And then we will, we will have them and we will try and uh, get them to about maybe a list of six to eight that we will use that um, will be belief statements for your strategic plan that the board will, will reference. Any questions or comments about belief statements? And I'm gonna do another screen share here. Any comments? Okay, so let's move on to the mission statement. Now your district already has a mission statement. I'm gonna tell you about the things that we're gonna look for in a mission statement. Then I'm gonna tell you, or I'm gonna share with you the mission statement you're already, you already have. And then you can decide if it's a mission statement that you would like to do some revising or if you'd like to keep it. So for a mission statement, it defines the present state or purpose of the school district. It answers the questions, what result and for whom and why we exist. It is something that all stakeholders should be able to articulate upon request. It should be clear and easy to understand. The mission statement should reflect the district's beliefs. So as you think about those belief statements that were just generated, the mission statement should reflect that. And lastly, it shouldn't be wimpy. It should be something pretty powerful that states what result, for whom, and why we exist. Here are some examples. And these again are random from other uh, school districts. Investing in students so they succeed and excel in an ever-changing world. Another one, ensure that each learner will develop the skills and knowledge necessary to experience success and personal fulfillment. Or another one, teach and inspire all students to excel in partnership with our community. Or a final, I think a final example, to achieve educational excellence and to inspire lifelong passion for learning. So those are just examples to give you an idea. And so a few things when we think about a, a mission statement, and again, I'll show you yours in just a second. You want it short, concise, easy to say, and remember, uh, usually maybe a, a seven to 15 words. And uh, with that, here is your current mission 
for the GFW School District. It is fostering lifelong learners in a caring environment. Fostering lifelong learners in a caring environment. And I believe that that mission statement was developed along with maybe a previous strategic plan. I'm going to stop sharing my screen again, and I'm going to just check in with the group. So how do you feel about your current mission statement? Do you feel like it's something that speaks to the criteria, why we exist, for whom, for what result? Do you feel like it's current? Anybody want to unmute and share your thoughts? Or it could be that with that homework assignment, you jotted down another mission statement that you'd like to toss out for consideration. So let's check in. Nathan, what's your thoughts here on the mission statement? So I think it's a great mission statement, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I think that it's a very broad statement that applies heavily to many areas, but not so much in others. And I don't necessarily have a good alternate statement mm -hmm. to utilize, um, but I definitely don't think we need to stick with everything that we've had for so long. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I honestly don't remember when this mission statement was created, but I think if we're tweaking many things, this is another area that we could certainly tweak and mm -hmm. make it fit 2021 instead okay. of 20 whenever it was created yep. whenever and i and i'm not thank you for that and i'm not sure either superintendent horton were you gonna do you know or maybe board members let's see i think chair keen has left now for his other I'm meeting but check on that if you can give me a second okay. i want to say that maybe it was around um maybe 2010 but i will okay i'm going back to check don't hold me to that specific date though i'll see if i can find something here okay it was with okay. Malone created when Steve Malone was superintendent. Okay. Okay. Is when this one was created. Okay. And Julie, was that a part of the strategic planning process at that time then when Superintendent Malone was there? I do not recall that. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. You just know it goes back to that. Okay. And um, I'm just going to share here is a, a mission statement that uh, Doug put in the chat box and um, GFW's mission is to provide a quality education that is comprehensive and addresses everyone's postgraduate graduation goals. Well, let me read that again. Uh, GFW's mission is to provide a quality education that is comprehensive and addresses everyone's postgraduation goals. And Cecilia put one in, thank you. Cecilia and hers is, the mission is to provide a high quality education in a safe, respectful and inclusive environment that builds a foundation for lifelong learners. And I'll read that one again too. The mission is to provide a high quality education in a safe, respectful and inclusive environment that builds a foundation for lifelong learners. Thank you. Those are both great. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Cecilia. Okay. Other comments? Do folks want to weigh in on the one that you already have or share one that you might have drafted? The one that you currently have again is fostering lifelong learners in a caring environment. I have a, just a short little update here. Um, okay. So the furthest I can go back to see is 1122 of 2010. And it states that the uh, um, school district vision is the GFW school district is fostering lifelong learning and caring environments. So I do, I do not believe I believe this was around in 2010 from the best I can see. 
Okay. Um, and then, um, perhaps Julie can articulate if that's when uh, Dr. Malone was here. Um, that I don't know. I would have to look at my book, which is at school. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I can tell you that. <laughs> All right. Well, that gives us an idea, though. We know we're, we're probably talking 10 years ago, maybe. Something like that. A best guess, anyway. My husband is thinking that it was longer than that. He, he remembers oh. coming, or being a part of a group coming up with it, and he was thinking probably mm -hmm. more than 20 years. Okay. Yeah, it's going back to at least 2000, because I remember on our old newsletters back then, it actually mm -hmm. it, uh, Live Long Learners. <laughs> I pointed mm. out when I started and I said, okay. I think it's supposed to be lifelong learners in that. Okay. <laughs> that was adjusted, but that goes back to at least two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Kristen and Wade. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else want to weigh in? Um, I wrote down JFW's mission is to, provide, is to provide an education that fits every student's need. Thank you, Catherine. And I'm gonna ask you to read that one more time so the group can hear it again. Um, GFW's mission is to provide an education that fits every student's need. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have one that they'd like to share? Nathan? I don't have another one I want to share. Okay. I just want to reiterate what mm -hmm. I had said earlier in terms of if we don't even know when the mission statement was originally created <laughs> or how many decades ago it was, mm -hmm. it's definitely past time to create a new one. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Very good. Okay. Well, you have some great suggestions, certainly, that the group has shared. Anybody have any others that they'd like to share? Okay, so for those of you that shared, please type your mission statement into the form link so that I can put it into a, a document that will, will give you a chance to vote on. And then again, if anyone else has additional ideas that either you just didn't feel comfortable sharing or some of you are on your iPhones tonight, so it's a little challenging to do that, but, um, or other ideas that you have, please just type them in and we will we'll gather all of those. And I would, I would say one thing of consensus is I didn't, hear, I didn't hear a big plea to keep your current mission statement. Does that seem kind of the way people are feeling? So we'll, if, if it's, would, go, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, I, I believe it's time for new time a time for a new one okay thanks okay and amy typed into the chat room um could you share the document again and i'm gonna uh, cut and paste the link in for you and then in addition there you go so now you're going to have just the link and in addition to the the link here in the chat room i will ask uh, superintendent horton to email it out to you because I'll give you a couple couple of days to think about this for each of the categories. So you'll have the link again and then you can access it that way. Okay. Anything else with mission statement? Okay. Final task for the evening then. I'm going to share my screen one more time. The last task of the evening as we think about the foundational elements of belief statement, mission statement, and vision statement. I always like keeping this one to last because it's kind of more fun in some ways too. Uh, here's some things that describe a vision statement. And my understanding is that you did not have a vision statement in the past. So here goes. Your vision statement provides guidance and inspiration as to what the school district is focused on achieving in the next three, five, or more years. Think in terms of an eye-catching 
billboard when you're driving down the highway. And if I'm new to the community and I see this billboard that says something that's going to catch my eye, that makes me say, wow, I really want to enroll my, my children in this school district. The vision is about becoming. It answers the questions, what do we want to become in the future? It's written very succinctly and in an inspirational manner that makes it easy for stakeholders to repeat. Some school districts have even called it kind of a slogan that they might use. So when you think about a vision statement, think what's possible and why this district, what are the words that attract people to the community? Here's some examples. Inspiring excellence for all. And again, think about that billboard. Inspiring excellence for all. To be a destination district focused on shaping the leaders of tomorrow. To be an extraordinary school district that tailors learning to each learner. So those were some examples. And then vision descriptors. The vision that you come up with might have words like adept or clear, competent, critical, direct, disciplined, effective, efficient, focused, healthy, Organized, ready, strategic, timely, visionary, world-class. Those might be some words that are used in your vision descriptor. And then um, we don't have any to, to rewrite. So we're really starting from scratch with a vision statement. So with that in mind, I am going to stop sharing. And I'm going to ask, check in with the group. Uh, vision statements that the group would like to share that you had a chance to jot down. And I, I don't think I said this, but in that last slide or one of those last slides, a lot of times folks will Google vision statement as well and come up with some ideas. Also in the packet of materials for this evening, there was a sample belief mission and vision that you can use to draw from as well. And maybe there's something that you see in that sheet that uh, catches your eye and you might want to do some rewriting on. So with that, let's hear from the group. What, what vision statements come to mind? And let's see, Doug has one that he popped in. GFW is a premier school district that excels in academics, arts, and athletics for every student and staff member. GFW is a premier school district that excels in academics, arts, and athletics for every student and staff member. Thanks for that, Doug. Let's hear from others. or words that you think would be important to include in the vision statement. Uh, mine, uh, I wrote, our vision is to be a school district that shows respect and inclusivity towards all students and the community. Oh, that's, that's great, Lauren. Do you wanna, and I'm gonna have you repeat it one more time so everybody can hear it again. Okay. Our vision is to be a school district that shows respect and inclusivity towards all students and the community. Very good. Thank you. I'm going to just share that Amanda put one into the chat room. So this is the letters G, F, W, G, growing, F, future, W, world class leaders. So growing, future, world-class leaders. So a spin on GFW. Very good. Thank you for that. Other vision statements or ideas? Ideas that you'd like to share? Let's see. I see... Um, Catherine's camera's on, Nathan's camera's on. Nathan, you have something you'd like to share? 
I just want to reiterate what uh, Ms. Blumhofer said. That's I, I was running through my head trying to think of other acronyms mm -hmm. to use GFW for. Um, using acronyms is a wonderful way to gain attention. It's using multiple mm -hmm. senses and uh, multiple ways to connect back to what the focus is. So something with GFW as an acronym is wonderful and I love it. Mm -hmm. Very good. It is definitely catchy. And again, think about that billboard. Uh, Catherine, I know you've got your camera on it. Right, do you have something that you wanted to share? Your your wheels look like they're turning as well, young lady. Um, I have, our vision is to create a safe and inclusive place for leaders to grow. Okay. And I'm having you repeat it one more time for the group. Um, our vision is to create a safe and inclusive place for leaders to grow. Wow. Very good. Okay. Other vision statements from the group. Any of our board members, our staff, our community members, any other students besides that would like to weigh in? And any other words that you'd like to make sure are included? I think that we should include the word inclusive. Um, I think that's a okay. word that catches people's eyes. Okay, that's good feedback. Include and make sure to use the word inclusive, okay? Good. Other words? Let's see. Brittany has put in the chat room representation, respect, and real world opportunities. It's very good too. Representation, respect, and real world opportunities. Uh, Nathan included uh, the word equitable and inclusive. So looking at those words, thank you for that. Any other words or vision statements? Let's see, I think uh, Nikki added in the chat room, um, not a full statement, but here are some thoughts. Students will have success for today and be prepared for tomorrow. Students will have success for today and be prepared for tomorrow. Thank you. Any others? We've got some great ideas that you have come up with. I would encourage you to put those in the chat, in the um, link, the form link that's in the chat room. And if there are others that you think of, and some like to play around with words, and so as you're thinking about those, you can put those in as well. Casey put the note, the word together, using the word together. I think that's important too. So you get a lot of great thoughts. And what we'll do with these then is if there needs to be some wordsmithing, I will take a few liberties. I will let you know what, what everybody's responses were, just like I've done throughout the entire process. But if there's a little bit of wordsmithing, I'll do that for you. And otherwise, it'll come back to you in the form of a, a document where you can take a vote. And for the belief statements, it'll probably be the top six. For the mission statement, we'll have you pick a couple and vision statement, pick a couple too, so that we can narrow those down. And then when we come back together next time, we'll try and get those finalized. Anything else with vision? Any comments you wanna add? Okay, if not, we are just about at the end of our task for this evening. I'm gonna share my screen for just a second again. And 
as we wrap up, and I will ask one more time if you have questions, but as we wrap up uh, next time when we come together, and that'll be on Wednesday, March 24th, we will finalize the belief, mission, and vision statements. Between now and March 24th, your superintendent and I will be working with a small group of administrators and staff. So heads up administrators and staff, um, we're gonna do a small work group and we're gonna craft some goals and objectives for this group to take a look at when we come together again. So next time we will then start finalizing those goals and objectives. There's a governance document that I will develop for uh, us to use. And then finally, I will be, uh, as the process winds down, I'll put together an action plan form that your superintendent will be able to use. Um, we'll have a monitoring schedule. I'll be talking about how the board monitors and utilizes their strategic plan. So those are some things that will happen as we come together next time. For next time, there is a homework assignment. It was in the packet of information. Uh, it's on goals and objectives. So we'll have you take a look at that as well. And we will come with some goals and objectives that are, are crafted. So between your work and our work, you know, we'll, we'll try and get um, everything merged together. And then our, our next meeting will be Wednesday, March 24th. We'll start at 6 p.m. Your superintendent will send out a link again to everybody along with the resources that we'll be reviewing. And a final thought, vision without action is a dream and action without a vision is aimless. So food for thought for you for this evening. So with that, any final questions, comments from any members of the group, things that you wanna add before we, we say goodbye this evening? Okay. I will just say as a new board member, I've enjoyed listening tonight um, to see some perspectives from all over mm -hmm. the students community and staff here and other board members as well. And so, um, I, you know, I, today, I, I know mostly listening here to see what people have to say was mm -hmm. um, good. So great. Thank you for that. Drew, I appreciate that. Good feedback. It really, uh, when you have a team and you have lots of ideas, you, you um, get a much better end product. And I think you have a lot of really great things that are coming together as far as your focus areas, your belief statements, your mission, and your vision statement. So I appreciate that. Well, with, like oh, to, go ahead. Mm -hmm. just say a quick word again. I would just like to thank everybody for being here and just say how impressed I am with mm -hmm. some feedback and comments and uh, the thoughts and our students, just amazing, thoughtful mm -hmm. ideas um, and just really taking us in, in great directions. So thank you for being a part of this process. Um, and, and to our school board, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for having the vision to go out to the community like this and to our staff and to say, where do you wanna go? Help us, help, help us figure out the direction we need to go. Um, I appreciate the collaboration around this and the direction. And I will tell you as a superintendent, as a servant leader, this, you are all really helping me too, because mm -hmm. this is telling me where the needs are, where the priorities are, and will help us move in that direction. So I really appreciate all of that. And uh, lastly, I want to thank about the board, thank the board again. Um, it's always, we always want to have our students in school and that is so important. And I, and I think we've heard today a little bit about um, supporting staff and mental health and whatnot. And thank you for, for um, continuing to find ways to support our staff. I think GFW has always been ahead of the state in terms of finding ways to um, find, whether it be additional prep time, whether it be uh, additional resources or Again, uh, giving them the 22nd, 23rd of March to be doing some retooling and also just to have that long block of time to just take a breath <laughs> before the final push of the year. So thank you to the board and thank you to all of you. With that, I don't know if there's a final adjournment because of your, your board chair not being here, but I, I think we just get to excuse everybody. Is that the plan? I think uh, Ms. Stoll, since I, she's got her camera on looking, I think she should get to excuse us all. Okay, just... I like that. <laughs> I would agree. What to do. 
do I just say leave? <laughs> you can say, whatever, say you like. <laughs> whatever. Thank you for being here and you're excused. Yes. So I meeting a, adjourned. <laughs> I have a perfect. Good job, Catherine. Perfect. A future school board member in the making. Goodbye, everybody. Take care. <laughs>